Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Garage Learning From Home. I'm really excited to share an amazing new video with you guys today. So once we come out of this and hopefully life returns a little bit more back to normal, we're gonna launch our Kickstarter for the Garage Learning, hopefully fund it, and be off to the races. A big part of the Garage Learning isn't just the classes, but it's gonna be the kits that we're gonna be putting together that'll show you at home how to make really cool stuff. So today, we're sharing Riley's video on how to build the 100 watt COB LED light at home. So Riley put this video together in his apartment using the pieces from the prototype kits that we had put together. Before we get ahead of ourselves, as a prerequisite, we really recommend that you watch the LED video that's on the channel right now, telling you the basics of electronics and how LEDs work. Unfortunately, we can't custom make all these parts and ship them right now, so you're gonna have to get a little crafty. Down below, there's a link to our Amazon page where we have all the parts used in this kit that you could buy off the shelf. And there's a discount code for UGLED that gives you 10% off if you buy their LEDs for part of this project. As far as the complexity of our videos, this one isn't really that bad. I feel it's a great first starter kit to start putting together yourself. So now, Riley's gonna take it from here. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, it's Riley with The Garage Learning, and today we're gonna to be building an LED hard light. We're gonna be using the LED COB kit, which includes a CPU chiller, a flange, a power supply, some thermal epoxy, a voltage step down, an LED chip, a bracket, a milled out slot nut, some screws, and some wires. In order to build this kit, you're gonna need a multimeter, a Phillips three screwdriver, some wire strippers, and a soldering iron. The first thing we're going to do is mount the chip to the chiller using thermal epoxy. Now grab some scrap cardboard or something to mix your epoxy on, grab your epoxy, and grab something to mix it with. So open up the epoxy, there's two parts to it. One's a glue, one's a curer to make it dry. And we're gonna squirt them out onto this piece of cardboard. Now you can go ahead and mix the glue. You wanna mix it very, very well. And once it's mixed, you can paint the front of the CPU chiller with the epoxy, being sure to remove all of the thermal grease from the chiller. Now you can go ahead and set the chip in place. Spread it around, make sure all areas of the chip get contact. The orientation doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use the side that the wires come out of as down. So I'm gonna orient the text facing up in relation to that. I'm gonna spread the glue around, make sure the chip is on there very good, and then I'm gonna center it as well as I can. Now that that's in place, I'm gonna set it down to dry in the corner over here for about 30 minutes. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare the wires for soldering to the chip and soldering to the voltage step down. So I'm gonna use my vice grip wire strippers. I'm gonna to go to about the middle of both wires. I'm going to strip them both in the center. So now that that's done, I'm gonna tin the wires with my soldering iron and I'm gonna solder them to the voltage regulator. Now that the wires are tinned, I'm gonna go ahead and tin the back pads on the DC-DC, um, the ones labeled negative in and positive in. When they're tinned, they should look something like this. Now you can go ahead and solder the wires negative to black and positive to red. Now you can go ahead and strip one end of this wire. We're gonna solder this wire to our XLR connector. That way, it can receive power from our power supply. So go ahead and spin the cable shield off of the XLR, and the whole connector should come apart. Now there are three pins on the back, labeled one, two, and three. We're gonna be using pins one and two. One is gonna be negative, and two is gonna be positive. You can go ahead and grab this connector with the solder cups facing up in a clamp. Then we can set it down for soldering. So go ahead, take the cable shield and slide it over the wires. And now I'm gonna cut down the exposed section of wire just so there's just enough to sit on the solder pad. 
Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tin the exposed wires. Now I'm gonna go ahead and solder pin one to the negative wire, the black wire, and pin two to the positive wire, the red wire. When you're done soldering, you can go and take the plastic shielding and slide it over the wires. Now you can take the front of the XLR connector and slide it back on. Now you can slide the whole connector together and screw the casing back together. Now that you're done with that step, we can plug in the power supply, plug this in, and set the DC-DC voltage regulator to the correct voltage which is 12 volts to run this fan. Now that that's powered on, we can take our multimeter and check the output voltage on the DC-DC. We want to set this to 12 volts using this screw here. So next, you can take your multimeter, and I'm gonna take the probes off it and put the uh, little alligator clamps on it. Positive goes to the port all the way on the right, and negative goes to the middle port. Now I'm going to grab the pads on the back of the voltage regulator with the alligator clamps. Um, negative one gets the black wire, the positive one on the output side gets the red wire. Now I want to check the voltage on the multimeter. That is reading 18.16 volts. We're actually looking for somewhere around 12 volts to run the fan, so I'm going to go ahead, take my flathead screwdriver, turn this over, and crank down on this potentiometer, turning it left uh, counterclockwise until we reach 12 volts. Cool, that is pretty close, I'll take it. Now we can go ahead and unplug this from the power supply, put the power supply off to the side for a second, get the multimeter out of here, now we're gonna go ahead, put this all to the side for a second and work on mounting the flange to this bracket and then getting the bracket prepared to be mounted under here. So the bracket on one side has two tapped or threaded quarter 20 holes and then two through holes for M3 bolts. We're gonna go ahead and take these countersunk tiny M3 screws and put them through onto these standoffs. You can kind of screw them down pretty tight with your hands. And once those are in place, you can go ahead and mount your flange to the back using these holes. So grab your other half inch quarter 20 screws and secure the flange into place. Cool. Now that that's done, we're gonna do a little test fit and see how long we want the wire to be on the fan. We want the wire to get to the center here where the DC-DC is going to be mounted on those standoffs. So I'm going to cut it about here. That's like three inches of exposed wire. About. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull the casing completely off the wire. And there are four colors here. There's black, yellow, green, and blue. Now the wires we care about are yellow and black. We're gonna separate those from the green and blue wires. Black is negative and yellow is positive. So we're gonna connect those to the output on the voltage regulator. Now that I've managed to separate the wires, I'm gonna pull the green and blue wires away and cut them down. And now I'm going to strip the yellow and black wires. 
Now I'm gonna solder the yellow wire to the positive output pad and the negative wire, the black wire, to the negative output pad. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Now we can go ahead and test the fan by plugging the power supply in again. Cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the voltage regulator upside down onto these mounting standoffs using the two final M3 screws. I have to modify the solder joint a little just to get access to the screw. And when you're done mounting the voltage regulator, it should look something like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount this bracket to the cooler. I'm gonna use these half inch quarter 20 screws. So now that we're done with that step, we can kind of see the light starting to come together. So the next thing we're gonna do is some strain relief. I'm gonna take the wires here and put them through the center uh, of these two holes, like right in the center between the two of them. And then I'm going to put this slot nut on top of them and kind of hold them down into place using screws through here into the taft holes below. So now I'm gonna tighten these down, not too tight, but tight enough to keep the wires from moving. And there's some strain relief. Next thing, and the final thing I'm going to do is solder these wires here to the pads on the LED. I'm gonna go ahead, find the right length, and then cut them to length. Once they're cut, I'm gonna strip them, tin them, and solder them. So on these pads here, I'm soldering black to negative and red to positive, just like always. So I've tinned the wires, I've tinned the pads, and now I can solder. Cool, when you're done, the light should look something like this. Now that we're finished with our LED build, let's go ahead and plug it in. We're at F22 shooting 24 FPS, and this is as dark as we can get it. So yeah, this is a solid performing light. Thanks for checking out this tutorial video. I appreciate you guys watching, and if you learned something, check out the Garage Learning, where we'll have these kits available soon.